everybody, my name is Patrick. Some of you may know me as Disembodied off of Instagram. Today I thought I'd show you guys how I edit my photos in Lightroom. Specifically, more of the vintage film edits that you've been seeing a lot and that have been popularized on Instagram and all social media. This is my own take on it. And I turned this into a preset, which is on my current preset pack online, which is linked in the description. So yeah, let's just get started. This is from a photo shoot I did back in Brooklyn this past summer with one of my good friends Haley. I'll link her down in the description as well. So first things first, you want to be shooting in RAW. That's CR2 or .RAW or there's like five or six other file formats depending on what camera you have, whether it's Sony or Panasonic or Canon, etc. Um, my files are CR2, doesn't really matter. You just want to have all that information in your photos to get the highest possible quality you can out of them. So here we got this photo, which was beautifully lit. Um, composure could have been a little better, but I still love it. I love the shadows from the plants on Haley's face. I love the contrast of the shiny chain and everything in it. So first things first, I'm going to cycle through my presets. I already know that I'm going to be using my portrait preset and all of these presets work with every photo you possibly have as long as it's exposed properly. And you see in the previews that they might look a little bit yellow, but I'll show you that that's not usually the case because first off, no preset's ever gonna work with every single photo without minor tweaking. So you wanna get that white balance proper. And it's pretty overexposed as well, see? So right there, we already start to get a pretty decent image. You know, you might wanna get the exposure down a little bit more. You might wanna bring the highlights up, depending on what you're going for. And just right there alone, you already start to get you know, a certain style. So I'm gonna go with the Disembodied Portra 400, my own take on Kodak's film stock. First things first, I see that once again, it's super yellow. You could click this little dropper right here and click on the whitest or darkest part of the image and see if it can balance the color properly. It clearly did here, super, um, the tones are actually really nice and interesting. I don't know. I want it to be a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to bump up the temperature somewhere around the 4000 range. And this is all going to depend on your settings from when you shot as well, whether you have auto white balance on or not but we'll go with this and yeah i will be showing you some of the settings that i have obviously so feel free to just mimic those if you wish honestly all of the main settings are pretty properly exposed i think it works shadows i might bring down a little bit just to get a little bit more depth in there um with this preset, it's not going to be very contrasty um, simply because the more contrast you add, the more, well, not vintage it looks. You know, what really defines those that vintage style is the dynamic range that those cameras were able to capture. If you want me to make a more detailed video about dynamic range and, and different types of cameras and what the purpose is for, then, you know, let me know in the comments. But Essentially, we don't want the contrast to be too high. I might actually even bring that down a little bit more. So my turn curve is pretty basic. It's just a regular S curve. It's not as drastic as most S curves. This is the before and this is after the tone curve. I really chopped those those blacks off like a ton left the highlights where they are just because there's not much highlights. Yes, there are some blown out parts here and you can see that because it's clipping in the histogram here, but that's what I'm going for with this photo. So we'll just run with that. This is before all of my HSL adjustments. This is after, pretty basic. I noticed that her lips weren't necessarily 
I don't want them too red because now that just doesn't look natural. So I want them more matching her skin tone a little bit. So I might even just bring that back to roughly around where it was at zero. The oranges, honestly, this is what justifies your skin tones and in this photo specifically, all of the rest of the background too. And I'm sorry if I'm sniffling, I'm a little bit congested. It's, it's not fun today. You don't want to leave the saturation of the orange where it is because that doesn't look natural because of the tone curve. It really drastically changes that image and you want your skin tones to be as natural as possible. So I think around the negative 20 area would really accentuate her natural skin tones. Um, you can mess with the luminance of it as well. I think this is pretty set straight at where it was at zero or where it where yours would be at zero. The luminance of the red really would just mess with her lips here because there's not much red in this photo. Really here, it's all just greens and oranges, maybe some yellow around the, the locket area. So I'm thinking I might bump the green hue a little bit more towards the bluish aqua area the saturation i don't want to bump it all the way these greens might actually be in the pure aqua or yellow yeah yeah these these greens would appear to be green are actually yellow so i think i'm going to bump that up to around 10, eight or 10 in this photo specifically. Once again, I wanna emphasize that your photos are all gonna be different. This is just how I get my, this is how I would edit this photo. For the yellows, I might leave it around five. So I don't want this to be too blown out. I still want some detail in that plan. I want detail in her face. And if I boost the yellows a lot, it's not pleasant. If all the other HSLs are pretty much subjective as well, I like how that looks right now. So this is essentially the photo that we just edited because I had split toning on the entire time. That's how I like to edit my photos because it still brings in those blues or purples and the highlights and the lower greens and the shadows without me actually having to edit it in after. Because afterwards, it would essentially have the same component in the highlights and shadows, but it would be slightly different. You can experiment with that for yourself. My sharpening, I don't like to go anywhere but 40. I might leave it around 25. Noise reduction, maybe 22. You can really see here in this preview how it would look. For my lens correction, I used a 17 to 40 millimeter Canon L lens for this photo. With the lens correction tab, it automatically implements that and corrects the profile and the vignetting around the edges and the chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is essentially small distortions around edges of detailed areas where it might start turning green or pink. And there's really no way of fixing that. So Lightroom does a pretty good job of taking care of this. And that all also depends on what lenses you're using. Some of the cheaper lenses might really be prominent in their chromatic aberration. Not necessarily something you always want. The grain, I wouldn't turn the grain up anywhere above 60. It just starts looking a little choppy. You might not even see this here. I'm gonna go somewhere in her hair with the shadows are very prominent and just show you exaggerated version. So this might look interesting to you. You might like this. Something I recommend if you want that prominent grain aspect is leave it around 30 to 40 and bring the size up of the grain. Some film stocks have a very prominent grain, some don't. I think these settings here are pretty valid for what I'm going for. I think this photo is done. Something that different film stocks have that, that really makes film stocks what they are is their highlight to shadow differences. So something that's very popular in film photos that you can replicate in your editing is adding greens or blues into your shadows. It really makes photos pop a little bit more, adds that contrast and colors that you didn't know you wanted. Something in the highlights, you can try to match the skin tones a little bit. Let's see, like a nice orange might work, but then in this photo, my entire wall here is also white in the highlight area, and I don't want that to be. I'm thinking, I'm just gonna scrub through this. You can also just 
bring the saturation entirely up and see what color you're working with. I kind of like where it is in like the purple-ish area. Yeah, so this is purple. I'll leave this around 20. You can mess with the balance to, to neutralize the ratio between the highlights and shadows. I like where this is looking right now. This is the before, this is after. Essentially, that's how I edit my photos. Feel free to check out my preset pack on my website, dsmbdvisuals.com. I will link that in the description and let me know what other videos you guys might want to see from me. And I just look forward towards seeing what you guys can create and come up with with some of my tips possibly. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and comment. Let me know what you want to see. Hit that like if you like this video or if you think that anything I shared with you today might have helped you out. And yeah, peace guys.